Okay, you're gonna like this. Uh, I made a Desmos sketch that lets you easily visualize what happens when you add two vector functions that define uh, simple motions. Um, so let me just like briefly, briefly review what we did in class. Um, let's say we've got a vector a that's a fixed vector, just over 10, up 2. So here's vector a. Um, and I'm writing it as a position vector that's starting at the origin. And then let's say on to the end of a, we're going to add b, which is a vector function that scales with time. So when time is 0, this is the 0 vector. When time is 1, it means we're going left 1, up 2. So at time equals 0, a plus b takes us here. At time 1, I've gone left 1, up 2, so like this. So this point would be where the vector sum takes me at time 1. So again, here's the a vector. Here's the b vector when time equals 1. And if I was going to write the resultant vector when you add them together, it would be that dashed one. At time 2, I'm scaling this vector to be length 2, so now I'm going left by 2 and up by 4. So here, left by 2, up by, well, let's just make a second one, actually. So here's uh, a length 1b, here's a length 2b, and the resultant vector would look like this. So here's t equals 2. Um, and as we stretch this b vector longer and longer, it's going to take us in this direction. If we were going to have time be negative, Let's imagine time is negative 1. That would flip b in the other direction, and so it would be tracing out this way. Um, let's do this all again inside Desmos. All right, so here is the Desmos sketch. Um, you may have noticed a connection between uh, these vector functions and parametrics. Um, so I'm using Desmos's parametric ability to visualize your vector functions. Um, so this is the a vector. Um, and it's written using a notation that makes it look like a point. Here's the b vector being scaled by time. But it's the same thing that was on the piece of paper a second ago. You can see, so like a is 10, 2. b is the vector time scaling negative 1, 2. But here's what we can do now. So you can show and hide these different folders to, to visualize different pieces of this. So here's the position vector a, uh, a of t. You can see it there. Here's the position vector for b of t. And you notice that there's nothing there, but that's because time is 0. So here's time equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is just b of t by itself as a position vector. So that's why you see it starting at the origin. OK, well, what happens if you want to add them together? That's the vector sum. So here you see back at 0. If I'm going to take that blue b of t vector but add it at the end of the green vector, you can see the two vectors being added. What if I want to look at the resultant vector? Here's the resultant vector. So the resultant vector is just the vector that takes you from where you started to where you ended. And so it's sort of like I've added this a and b together, and this vector represents uh, that, that addition. So you can see, and if you want to hide things to make it like less cluttered, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to hide the b vector by itself. So now you only see b happening at the end of a. And then if you want to visualize the entire path this traces out, you can click Path. And so you can see that the red resultant vector is pointing to every spot along the black path here. OK, so that's the idea. But it's a very powerful idea because we can play around with a lot of different aspects of this. So let's pretend, let's pretend I want to make both of these scale with time. So here you can see time equals 0. They're both a 0 vector. But then as time increases, uh, here I'm going, to make, I'm going to make this vector scale a little less quickly. OK, so you can see the red vector is stretching out that way. The blue vector is stretching out that way. What happens if you add them together? Here's the vector sum. Okay, let's hide it. So here's the vector sum. So you see that the a vector is extending in its direction, and the b vector at the end is also getting longer. And so here's the resultant vector. So it seems like the resultant vector is still tracing out a line. And if we want to see the path, there's the path. OK, let's try another one. What if, instead of scaling it by t, I'm going to scale it by t squared. 
Let's go back to zero. Maybe we got to zoom out a little bit for this. So again, I'm just looking at the two position vectors. Let's go from let's go from zero to four in steps of half. All right, so maybe let's go to eight. Okay, so you see that the red vector, which is a of t, is scaling at a constant rate. The b vector is scaling as time squared. And so it's, it starts out scaling slowly, but then it gets longer faster. OK, what happens if we look at the vector sum? There's the vector sum. What happens if we look at the resultant vector? Interesting. So now the resultant vector no longer looks like a straight line. It looks, look, it looks like it's kind of curving. Let's look at the path. Oh, interesting. A slanty parabola. Um, neat. So you can play around, uh, and this is a powerful tool to help you visualize what happens when you add simple motions. I hope you have fun with it.